fat loss is relatively simple. If you stay active and control your calorie intake, most people will see steady fat loss progress. But with all the contradicting information found online, losing fat often seems like a confusing process and this tends to discourage people. To prevent common fat loss myths from impacting your fitness journey, in today's video I will debunk 5 common fat loss myths using scientific research. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up so I can reach more people and also help more people. And let's dive straight into it by discussing myth number 1 and that is that fat loss can't be enjoyable. People commonly have this idea that fat loss should feel hard and that there's no or very little room for enjoyment. For instance, I often see people restricting food intake a lot, making them feel hungry most of the time, and with exercise, the emphasis is placed on sweating and feeling tired at the end of a session. In the moment, it may feel like you're doing something good if you take drastic measures and are very strict on yourself in your fat loss journey, but being overly strict eventually becomes counterproductive. Losing fat is a slow process. If it took you months or maybe even years to gain all the fat that you have currently, we can't expect to lose it in a few weeks. So we need time and patience to make a fat loss phase work. And the only way you can put in effort for an extended period of time is when you have a sustainable approach. Anyone can push hard for 3-4 to four weeks and then get back to their old habits. The key for lasting fat loss progress is having a reasonable amount of effort but then being able to sustain it for an extended period of time. Because if we look at the research, the struggle is not making fat loss progress, but it is losing fat and then keeping it off. In one study on obese individuals, within a year after losing 10% of their body weight, the majority of people regained the weight they lost. You may have seen this in your environment as well, someone has lost a lot of weight using whatever diet is popular at the time, but then after the diet, the person falls back into old habits and the weight slowly creeps back on again. Clearly something is going wrong here, the diets that most people follow are centered around short-term results rather than creating long-term behavior change. This is where I believe we should differ. Instead of having a super strict approach and doing 6 week fat loss challenges, let's take a bit more time, allow flexibility and enjoyment with your nutrition. That's the way we get long term lasting progress. No foods need to be off limits. As long as you are in a calorie deficit and have meals that make you feel reasonably satisfied, you don't have to cut out complete food groups or give up all snacks. We know from research that having flexibility in your diet is one of the key predictors of long term weight loss maintenance. This ties nicely into the second myth of this video and this is probably one you've heard before and that's that carbohydrates make you fat. If you have seen my recent video on how to calculate your macros, you will know that no single macronutrient by itself is fattening. All macronutrients have calories and the human body burns a certain number of calories per day. The only way you can gain fat is if the calories that you consume from food exceed the calories you burn on a daily basis. So not a single macronutrient is fattening, eating too many calories is why fat gain occurs. And there's of course research to support that carbohydrates by themselves do not increase fat gain and also do not slow down fat loss while you are in a calorie deficit. In a 2017 meta-analysis, 32 fat loss studies comparing high carb and low carb diets were analyzed. No differences in fat loss were found as long as calorie and protein intake were equated. But how about genetics? Can someone genetically be more susceptible to gaining fat due to carbohydrates? A few theories exist that suggest certain genotypes may cause some people to respond better to a low carb diet when fat loss is the goal. So in a 2018 study, the researchers went on to investigate the relationship between genotype pattern, carbohydrate intake and weight loss. Even in this case, no differences in fat loss were found between low carb and high carb diets irrespective of having the genotype that is often associated with gaining more fat on a high carb diet. This goes to show, carbohydrates do not inherently inhibit fat loss. As long as you are in a calorie deficit and keep your protein intake in check, having carbohydrates is not harmful to your fat loss progress. In fact, having carbohydrate rich foods like oats, potatoes and different types of fruits can help with designing high volume and filling meals that make it easier for you to stay in a calorie deficit. Now, if you get your carbohydrates from sugary drinks that don't fill you up, then yeah, sure, having a high carb intake in that case can make it harder for you to maintain a calorie deficit. But that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm talking about is having whole food carbohydrate sources in your meals to benefit the sustainability of your diet. The third myth is related to having a calorie deficit. That having a calorie deficit is required for fat loss, that's a fact. We can't defy the laws of thermodynamics. However, just because you need a calorie deficit does not also mean you need to rigidly track your calories to be in a calorie deficit. Counting calories is great and for many people a good starting point to get a grasp of how many calories they're consuming on a daily basis. But over time it's possible that counting your calories starts feeling like a task and it might make you also feel a bit too obsessive about that calorie number. There are alternative ways you can control calorie intake to be in a calorie deficit. Counting calories is just one tool you can use to control your calorie intake, but you can also control calories by maintaining portion sizes for instance. 
Something I do with some of my clients that rather not track calories is maintain portion size control based on hand size. This is practical because your hand size is related to your body size, so it helps you portion out your meals well. Say for instance we have 3 meals per day, for each meal you can have a palm of carbs, a palm of protein and 2 fists of vegetables. The amount of food shown is just an example, but you can see how using this portion tracking system can help you maintain control over your food intake without actually having to track your calories. While maintaining the portion sizes, you can track your progress and increase or decrease the portion sizes based on how well you are progressing over time. Another tool you can use is something like intermittent fasting in which you skip breakfast to cut down your calories for the day. There is research to suggest that intermittent fasting helps with creating a calorie deficit without having to track your calories. Because most people tend to have a lower daily calorie intake if they incorporate a 14 to 16 hour fast in their day. But the moral of the story here is that counting calories is not the only way you can control your nutrition to be in a calorie deficit. The fourth myth is another common one and that is that you need a lot of cardio to lose fat. We have research showing that just with controlling calorie intake without any cardio, you can lose body fat. The only way cardio can help your fat loss progress is if the extra calories you burn from your cardiovascular activities increase the existing calorie deficit you have created via nutrition. Because if you just do more cardio without paying attention to nutrition, you typically won't see much fat loss progress. Just think about it, while you can burn roughly 500 calories if you have an intense 1 hour run, you can eat back these calories in a matter of 10 minutes. There is also research supporting that just doing more cardio without changing your nutritional habits typically doesn't result in more fat loss. Cardio by itself typically does not burn enough calories to put you in a significant calorie deficit. So to see significant fat loss, just doing more cardio is not enough. We need a calorie controlled diet in combination with a good amount of activity to see significant progress. Not to mention that lifting weights tends to have more beneficial effects in a fat loss phase than cardio because it helps with maintaining muscle while you are in a calorie deficit. The fifth and last myth is about how your fat loss progress develops over time. Because we tend to have this idea that if we are consistent with our workouts and hit our calories every day, we should see linear progress and lose 1-2 to two pounds every week. But the truth is, short term progress can fluctuate a lot, especially if you use body weight measurements to gauge your fat loss progress. One week you might be down 2 pounds and then the other week it's up a pound, and this is normal, it's part of the process, we can't expect your progress measures to go down in a linear fashion. Variables like muscle mass, water retention, at what time you had dinner and more can influence your weight measurements. This is why I suggest you kind of ignore short term developments in your body weight. The reason we track your body weight today is not to compare it with tomorrow's weighing, but to see that over time, say over a 3 to 4 week period, what developments have occurred. I also wouldn't use just your body weight to measure fat loss. Because say you're gaining muscle while losing fat, your skill won't show you this, it will just show a stagnant body weight or even sometimes go up. So next to measuring your body weight, also take body measurements and progress pictures to get a better idea of how your fat loss progress is developing over time. And that was all for today's video. I hope this video shows how having a flexible and long-term perspective in your fat loss journey is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Leave me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.